Hi, we are just finishing off chapter three of Super Fudge. So um, he's been told, Peter has been told, that they're moving from New York City to Princeton, which is in a whole different state of America. Um, he doesn't want to go. Uh, he's just finding out the details from his mum. Um, Peter, we care about you a lot. That's one of the reasons for moving to Princeton. And we didn't even get to tell you the really big news. Oh, there's more, I said. Well, I can't wait to hear it. Daddy has taken a year off. I stopped packing. He quit his job at the agency? No. He's been fired? No. Then what? He's taken a leave of absence. Oh, wait, um, he, he wants to tell you himself. She went to my door and called, Warren, Warren, could you come in here? I'm changing Tootsie, Dad called back. Be there in just a minute. I thought Dad never changed a nappy in his life. He didn't, <laughs> not until Tootsie came along. Oh, what's so special about changing her nappies, I asked. Nothing, it's just that Dad realizes he missed out on some of your baby experiences and he doesn't want to make the same mistakes again. <laughs> He's so busy changing Tootsie, he hasn't got time for anybody else. Peter, that's not fair, Mom said. What do you know about fair? Dad came into my room, smelling like baby lotion. I told Peter you have a surprise for him, Mom said. I'm taking the year off, Dad said, and that way I'll have more time to spend with the family because I'll be working at home. I'm going to write a book. A book? I said. That's right. On the history of advertising and its effect on the American people. Couldn't you write something more interesting? I asked. Like a book about a kid who runs away because his parents decide to move without asking him first. Sounds like a good story, Dad said. Maybe you should write it yourself. Maybe I will, I said. And I'd like to know how we're going to eat with you not working. Well, we've some money saved and I'll probably get an advance for writing the book. Give it a chance, Peter, Mom said. I'll think about it, I told her. But if I'm gone in the morning, don't be surprised. Just then, from the other room, we could hear Fudge singing himself to sleep. M-A-I-N-E spells mean. F-U-D-G-E spells fudgy. P-E-T-E-R spells pita. B-E-E-R spells whiskey. <laughs> Will you listen to that, I said. The kid will be a real hit in kindergarten. So that's the end of chapter three. We're now going to read chapter four, which is called Off the Wall. I told my best friend, Jimmy Fargo, about Princeton. You're moving? He asked. Like he couldn't believe it. Not exactly, I answered. We're just going for one year. You're moving, he said. I can't believe it. Well, neither can I. You don't have to move, he said. You could always stay here if you really wanted to. You don't think I want to stay? I don't want, I don't know anybody in Princeton. You think I want to go to some school where I don't have any friends? Then tell your mother and father you refuse to go. That's what I'd do. But where would I live? With me. But where would I sleep? On the floor, Jimmy said. It's good for your back to sleep on the floor. I thought about sleeping on the floor for a whole year, about living with Jimmy and his father. Mr. Fargo used to be an actor, but now he's a painter. He paints these weird looking pictures of circles and triangles and squares. He's so absent-minded that he only buys food when Jimmy reminds him. One time, I looked in their refrigerator, and all they had was an empty bottle of wine, half an apple, and a salami and onion sandwich so old it had turned green. If you don't stay, I'm never going to talk to you again, Jimmy said. I mean, never. He bent down and tied his shoelace. Jimmy's laces are always undone. And I'm going to tell Sheila Tubman she can have your rock in the park, he added. You wouldn't. Try me. Well, some friend you're turning out to be. Same for you. Jimmy turned and walked away. 
his hands stuffed deep into his pockets. I thought of plenty more to say as soon as he was gone. But instead of running down the street after him, I went home. Is that you, Peter? Mom called. No. I went to my room, slammed my bedroom door. I was glad that I hadn't bothered to hang up my map of the world again. I took out my Kreskin's crystal. Jimmy gave it to me on my last birthday. When I can't fall asleep at night, I hold the chain above the perspex base and, and watch the small ball swing from side to side. I concentrate on it until my eyes get this heavy feeling and I want to close. I open my window enough to throw out my Kreskin's crystal. I imagined it smashing into a zillion pieces on the sidewalk below. But suppose I had trouble falling asleep in Princeton. What would I do? I put it back in its box. There had to be a better way to get even with Jimmy Fargo. Two hours later, I was still thinking up ways to get back at him. When the doorbell rang, it was Jimmy. Changed my mind, he said. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, me too. I was disappointed, that's all. I don't want you to move. But there's nothing I can do about it. It's not your fault. No, that's what I was trying to tell you, I said. I know. Well, my father says Princeton's just an hour by train. That's right. So I won't give Sheila your rock after all. Thanks. She wouldn't know what to do with it anyway, I said. But I'm not going to use it until you come back. Okay. I won't use my Kreskin's crystal until I get back either. Deal, Jimmy said, and we shook on it. The next morning, when I was going down in the elevator with Turtle, Henry said, I'm going to miss you and your family. <laughs> Bet you won't miss Fudge, I said. Oh, yes, even that little devil, Henry said. I remember the day he got into my elevator and pushed all the buttons at once, jammed up the works for two hours. Henry laughed. He sounded like a sea lion. I always expect him to slap his arms together when he laughs. And I'll miss that baby of yours, too. Won't get to see her grow up now. Sure you will, I told him. We're only going for a year. Yeah, that's what they all say, Henry muttered. Outside, it was gray and humid. I wondered if the sun was shining in Princeton. As I walked Turtle down the street, he sniffed here and there, trying to find a place he liked. I encouraged him to use the curb. In Princeton, he'll be able to go wherever he likes, I thought. Maybe I won't even have to take him on walks. I'll just open the door and he can run out into the yard. I won't have to clean up after him, either. Ever since New York City passed what I call the doggy do law, Walking turtle hasn't been that much fun. At first, when I heard that every dog owner has to clean up after his own dog, I told Mum that I wouldn't be able to walk turtle anymore. Mum said, well, that's too bad, Peter, because if you won't walk him, who will? I was hoping Mum would volunteer. I was hoping she'd say, I know how grossed out you feel about the idea of picking up turtle's dog do. But she didn't. Instead, she said, look, Peter, you're going to have to make a tough decision. If you want to keep Turtle, you're going to have to clean up after him. Otherwise, Daddy and I will try to find a nice farm somewhere in the country, and I didn't wait for her to finish. Send Turtle to a farm? I shouted. Are you kidding? He's a city dog. He's my dog. Well then, Mum said, smiling. I got the point. Mum bought me a contraption called a pooper scooper. It's a kind of shovel attached to a bag, and... When Turtle does his thing, I scoop it up, get it into the bag, and tie the end and toss it into the trash can. At first, I made a mess of myself trying to get it to work, but I'm a regular expert. Still, it's pretty disgusting. Almost as disgusting as Tootsie's nappies. I wish I could train Turtle to use the toilet, especially in winter, when I stand around freezing while he takes his time, trying to make up his mind. I know it's not Turtle's fault. He can't help being a dog. And when he sleeps at the foot of my bed or licks my face... It's all worth it. Just as Turtle was finishing, Sheila Tubman came skipping up the street. I hear you're moving, she said. I nodded, scooped up his stuff. Good. I was afraid it was just a rumor. I can't wait until you're gone. Then I won't have to smell your yucky dog anymore. My dog is not yucky, I yelled, tying up the poop bag. Did you ever smell him, Peter? Yeah, all the time. 
Well, I guess you didn't notice, because you smell so much like him yourself. And she started skipping away. Hey, Sheila, I called. Yeah? She turned around. Stuff it. Peter Hatcher, you're disgusting. Well, that's better than what you are, I called, enjoying myself. Oh, yeah? What's that? She asked. Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Huh, you're very funny, she said. You and your yucky dog are both very funny. Sick her, turtle, I said. Turtle growled, then started barking, which was very funny because he doesn't know what sick her means. <laughs> but Sheila didn't know that he didn't know, so she started screaming and running towards our building. And when Turtle saw her go crazy like that, he took off after her, barking up a storm, thinking it was some kind of game. He pulled his leash right out of my hand, so I had to chase after him, calling Turtle, Turtle down, boy, because he was already jumping up and down on Sheila, trying to lick her face. Sheila went right on screaming. Finally, Henry came out and asked, what's going on here? He pulled Turtle off Sheila and held him for me. I picked up the end of his leash and patted his head. It's Peter Hatcher, Sheila said. He told his dumb dog to sick me, and he did. He did not, I said. He did too. You don't even know what sick means, I said. I certainly do. Oh, yeah? What? I asked. It, it, it means it's like like giving germs to a person, Sheila said. The one he sick gets sick too. I started laughing. <laughs> Do you hear that, Henry? Do you hear what she said? I heard, Henry said, and I want you to keep your dog outside until he calms down. He turned to Sheila. Come on, honey. I'll take you upstairs first. I'm so glad he's moving, Sheila sniffed. I hope he never comes back. There should be a law. I laughed all the way to the corner. I think Turtle did too. On the morning of the move, Mom woke me at six o'clock. I still had to pack my trunk of special things. But first I wanted some juice. I'm always thirsty first thing in the morning. On my way to the kitchen, I passed Tootsie's crib. She was watching her mobile gurgling away. She was also covered in trading stamps. They were stuck to her arms, her legs, her belly, and her face. She even had one on top of her head and one pasted to the bottom of each foot. There's a picture there. You see a little tootsie with stamps on her? So trading stamps are they're, they're stamps like you put on an envelope, but you get them from a, from a supermarket. You, you collect them for rewards. Um, and... Uh, you can see who's put them on the baby. It's a fudge. Um, hey, Mom, I called. What is it? It's Tootsie. But I just... I didn't wait for her to finish. Hurry up, Mom, I called. Mom raced in, buttoning up her shirt. Oh, no, she said when she saw Tootsie. And then she shouted, Fudge! Hello, Mommy, Fudge said, crawling out from under Tootsie's crib. He was wearing his disguise, Black eyeglass frames attached to a rubber nose with a stick-on beard and mustache. It sent away for it months ago. It cost four cereal box tops and 25 cents. Did you do that to Tootsie? Yes, Mommy, he said, using his best little boy in the world voice. Why? Mom asked. Tootsie told me to. He climbed up the side of her crib and reached in, shaking Tootsie a little. Didn't you tell me to, good girl, good little baby? Tootsie said, ah, and she kicked her legs up in the air. That was a very naughty thing to do, Mum told Fudge, and I am very angry with you. Fudge kissed my mother's hand. I love you, Mommy. That's not going to work today, Mum told him. I love you anyway, he said, kissing her other hand. You're the best Mommy in the whole world. Don't you love your little boy? Yes, I love you, she said, but I'm still very angry with you. Very. And she smacked Fudge on his backside. He pouted for a minute, about to cry, then changed his mind. Didn't hurt, he said. You want one that will? Mum asked. No. Then don't you ever do anything like that again. Do you understand? Yes. Hey, Mum, I said. I thought you don't believe in violence. I don't, ordinarily, Mum said, but... Sometimes I forget. Look, it's okay with me if you want to spank Fudge. I said, personally, I think a spank in a day would be good for him. No, 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 Fudge shouted, holding his rear end. 
Why'd you really do it? I asked him. I want to trade her in for a two-wheeler bicycle like yours, he said. <laughs> you can't trade her in, Mum said. She's a person, not a book of stamps. <laughs>